Right, hello YouTubers. It's two years on and I want to do another review of the Singer Futura sewing machine. Um, so I've had it a couple of years and I couldn't get to grips with the embroidery side of things. However, two years on, I've had another go at it and there's a couple of things that you YouTubers, ideas you've sent to me and tips you've given me that I've tried out and I'm hoping now that I can show you what I've learned in order to help you with the sewing machine. When I first got it, I was able to do the embroidery perfectly when you just have a nice piece of uh, linen and you put your, your stabiliser on the back. It always comes out beautifully. I had no problems with that. And I checked as you've got in the book, as people were pointing out to me on YouTube, the different stabilisers you use for the different fabrics. And that is down to trial and error. I mean, I didn't realise denim and linen, are, they're, they're quite unstable because of their loose weave. So it has been really, really helpful to refer back to this and your tips and ideas. However, when I, when I continued to still try and create something, I still found it kept nesting underneath. So two things I've done different, completely different, that I think are the tip. And the main one was when I had uh, quite a few people got in touch with me to use bobbin fill on the bobbin. And what I was doing, I was using my embroidery thread. I'd gone out and I'd bought the uh, Robson um, embroidery thread and that was beautiful on the top, but I was using it as a bobbin. And you need to have bobbin fill. So I've done that, I've, I've, I've popped it onto the bobbin. You can actually buy these ready done, which I think is probably a really good idea if you're going to do a lot of embroidery. I think it's a great idea. But I just bought one spool to see if it worked. And boy, did it work. I have created this and this in no time at all without any hassle whatsoever. The other thing I did, which was also slightly different, when I put the fabric onto the hoop, I, I got the uh, stabiliser and I, I ironed it all on. And when I put the fabric through, I really made sure I pulled it really tight. And what I hadn't quite realised, you've got a locking screw here. So I popped the screwdriver in and I really tightened it up. And then I pulled it again and tightened it up. So I'll go through that in a minute with a little project that I'm going to have, have a go at in a minute. OK, the first thing I've done is get this ironed into place. I've used the stabiliser, Villain H250. I've, it's an iron-on one, so I've laid it down, I've ironed it, I'm letting that cool down so it's nice and solid. I've got my bobbin thread ready. Because it's stretchy, I want to be very careful, as I said to you, to pull it into the hoop. Be very careful, because if you put it too much, and, the, and, the, and it's because it's quite um, a stretchy material, you might end up with this puckering. So you have to be very, very careful when you stretch it, that you don't overstretch it. I know all that's in the instructions, but it is very easy to overstretch. You have to be very careful. So if we come round to the sewing machine now, I've got the sewing machine ready there. And I'm just going to switch it on and you'll see that all the buttons and lights all come on and they're all whizzy. And here I've got it on S for sewing. Well, the first thing I need to do is get it round to the E. Now, another tip people were giving me was have it slightly off the E, slightly up. And I have found that's helped. Why? I don't know, but that's what I've been asked. Obviously, it loses the tension a little bit. Round the back here, we like to come round to here, there's a little switch. So that needs to be switched across. Can you see this is for sewing? And then this is if you're guiding the material through yourself. So remember to switch that one over. And then you do need a really stable work surface because another thing, if it's too bouncy, the machine bounces and then that causes the, the needle to bounce a lot, which obviously then causes a nesting. So now this will slip in and make sure it's really gone home, really click it into place and then it'll all jet stream off and off it'll go. So that's ready now to go. So now I'm just going to get my bobbin, I'm going to pop it in. It comes back on itself like this. So you pop that in there, you come back round there, and then that's ready to pick up the thread when I thread the top. There's two places to put the thread on. One of them is on here, and the other one is here, and you have to put the attachment on. And this is the part that pops in there, that pops in there. So you can either run your your, your thread from here or from here. Some people run it from here and then if you do, you probably need one of these caps to hold it into place. I still prefer to run it from here 
and I don't find that there's a huge difference either way if I use this one or that one. Probably bounces around a little bit more on there, but that's maybe the setup with the table. You push it through here, it comes down and round and under, and then you've got your little hook here. Do make sure you've got it around that little hook. All right, and then of course you need to think about what foot you've got on. At the minute I've got an ordinary foot, so I'm gonna to need to take this whole thing off. So at the back there's a little clip and we can unclip that and get that foot off. There's a little lever there. That's got that off. But we actually need to take this whole foot off and you have to do that with a screwdriver. There's a bit of a faff. So we're gonna take that off now. I'm gonna show you how to do that and how to set the new foot on. And you need to make sure your needle is the right sort of needle for the material you're gonna be using. You really do need to have a nice new needle and that to be nice and sharp. Otherwise it's gonna be trying to get through the material and then that's gonna cause some of the puckering and nesting. Okay, so this screw here needs to be unscrewed so you can get rid of this other, this other one here, underneath here. All right, so you just screw that, unscrew that a bit more. Now I've got the needle midway and the reason I've got it midway is because this grey bit here, when you slide this on, this grey bit goes over the top of that. So this grey piece of the foot, but you want to watch your needle and you don't catch your needle. So for that to work a little bit easier, if you just put your hand on this here, ease it up gently and slide that on. You can now let it drop down and then you can get your screwdriver. Keep, it, keep your third finger on it there and screw it in. Make sure it's screwed up tight and pushed up high. And you'll see then that this is over the top of this piece here. And then make sure it's really tight and you're ready to go. So now as your needle comes down, this is in the middle of this here. It's nicely positioned in the middle. Okay. One of the beauties of this machine is it's got the threader for the to thread the thread, which is great. Making sure this is still caught round here, making sure your needle is at the highest point, pop that under those two little prongs there, run it round there, and then there is a lever here and you push it down and it goes, gently release it, otherwise you're gonna be pulling it back out again. And it goes through the needle eye. And you can see, if you can come down here, you can actually see now where the it's threaded for us. So all I've got to do is catch hold of that piece of thread. So now I've got the thread through the needle eye and then I'm gonna go down, I'm doing it by hand, this, this dial here at the side, push it down and back up again and you'll see it's caught underneath it's caught that thread and there she comes so now you've got your bobbin through all right so that's threading the machine so that that's all done you've got a speed dial here don't have it too fast for embroidery because again it's going too fast and then it can cause that pockery so I tend to have it around about between yes and the P. You can speed it up, but I wouldn't suggest you speed it up halfway through a project. Over to the computer. You do need the computer in order for this to work. You'll, you'll get a disc. It's very easy to load. It's very, very simple to do. Just pop your lead in there. If it's not connected to the computer, and the, uh, sorry, if it's not connected and the embroidery machine isn't on, then it will not work. You have to have the embroidery machine on in order for this to work. You've got a little text box up here, a T. It's all quite straightforward. And when you click it, you get this here. And then I'm going to choose, I gave you, I showed you a sample earlier on of the different ones you can have. And I'm going to pop that one in there. You've got your height and your spacing. You can play around and you can play around with colors if you want to. I'm simply just gonna type in what I want to type because I'm gonna put the color red on that I want. Up here in the tools, you've got set, uh, set hoop size and you've got small, large or multiple. Um, this one today that I'm working on is just a small one. So I'm now just going to pop my text in there that I want to put onto here. Okay, remembering that when you put your embroidery hoop in there, it goes this way round, you need to make sure you've got your hoop like this with this uh, fastener here on the right and obviously the top piece in place. So we're bringing it over here. 
and I've opened this up so that it's got a lot of room because this is quite thick. I'm going to lay this on top of here and I'm going to make sure it's positioned as best I can. I usually pop the top bit in first because then I can get my thumb around there and hold it. Then I hold that in and I gently ease it down underneath. And you can see there that's actually gone in but it's very floppy. So what I need to do now is tighten it up a little bit like this and just gently keep on pulling and I think this is where I was going wrong before so I wasn't pulling it tight enough but be careful not to pull it too tight because otherwise your work will be distorted. Now I've had to ease this top one off because it was it this wasn't it was all puckered inside so what I'm doing is easing this through here before I put this back down so I don't have any puckering around the edge Otherwise, we're going to end up with it being very bouncy. Just gently pulling that through there. So you do have to play with, this is the crucial bit, you do have to play around with this bit so that you get it nice and tight. And that's looking good. All right, so what we need to do is, they suggest in the book, is giving it a little tap. That's still quite buoyant, so I'm just going to gently ease it out a little bit more, but being careful not to overstretch it. You're ready now to put your project on. You line this up with the guide here. That's quite straightforward. The tricky part I found was trying to get this through because obviously it's hitting this foot here. So you need to raise that. But you also need to get your little finger on that, that there. Can you see that? And raise that up. And then she slides in beautifully and clicks into place. You actually can hear it clicking. So we're actually ready now to send our design from our computer across. Okay, so I've got what I want on here. Now up here you've got a trace design, so you need to do that. And the reason you do that is because then it will show you on the machine where your design is going to end up. So you heard the machine engage, just click start, and it will tell me now where that is going to sit. And I know that that name that I've just created there is going to sit inside Okay, we're ready now to send our block. I did that by clicking up here on the sewing machine. Send your block across. Before you send your block across, if you'd like to come over here, we've got our trace design. You need to make sure that little foot's down there, ready to go. Otherwise, it beeps at you. But it does give you a signal on here, and then you can just check what the beeping means in your, in your book. So we're going to send the block. The block's gone over. Push the start button here, this was green, and I pushed the start button and we're off and going now and it's beginning to embroider. And as I say, I'm doing it slowly because it's very elastic material and it's sitting nicely inside my trace design there. So you can see where it's going to sit on your embroidery. So as you can see, we're reaching the end of our little project with the name Ruby May. I had no breakages whatsoever with the thread, so I can only surmise that it, this um, stabiliser was strong enough, it was sitting in the hoop and pulled as nice and tight without being too springy, we'll know in a minute when we undo it. And this is just off the E and we've got the bobbin thread. So that is a project I'm really, really, really pleased with. So thank you to all you YouTubers out there for all of your wonderful ideas. Well, what I intend to do on the bib, well, I've, got, I've got the name underneath and I want to put a little dark or a little teddy bear up in the top corner. And you've got all of these up here. So you're going to go to a new design and then you've got a clean page. And then you've got all of these here and you've got a design library. And I want it for the small hoop. So then you come down and I'm going to go for the duck. Okay, and you okay it. It will plonk it in the middle there like that, but you can, you can move it around, make it as small as you want, put it where you want it to go, which for me is up in that top right corner. Make sure the select is still on small because it's jumped itself across there. So bring it back down. All right, sometimes when you go to a new page, it can do that, the program can do that. And then you're ready to go. So click outside. Now it will do that, it's quite annoying. I don't know why it does it, it goes back to the middle. Just pop a box around it and pop it where you want it to go. 
you can trace your design just like before and then you can see where it's going if it's in the right quadrant and all the rest of it and then you are ready then just to say stitch it it's, it's telling me the hoop's not engaged at the moment but ignore that but you're just ready then to stitch it and send your block across I've got my yellow thread because it's going to do the duck's beak. I know it's going to go up in this corner here. I want it around here somewhere. And I'm going to push start and it will be doing the beak. This is yellow. So I've had the yellow in to do the beak. The beak's finished now and it's stopped here ready. So now I need to change the thread because we're on to this colour here, the blue. So that's what I'm going to do now. So now I have the eye of the dark, so now it's stopped there ready, it's stopped ready for me to put the next colour in and I'm going to have a red dark, so I need to now change the thread to red. So we're off now with the red. I'm going to stop it, because I want to get rid of that piece of thread there, because it's going to get caught up. You can do it afterwards, but... I find it's quite better if you do it as you go along. So we've got our beak, our eye, and now we've got the red outline. So I've now changed it back to blue because I'm on the next block. So off we go. So I'm ready now to take my design out. Obviously lift your foot up, click this across, gently ease it forward. It's going to catch on there. Again, the same thing, lift this up, and then you can slide it. Oh, make sure your needle's up you can slide that out and there you have your design well, we have the finished piece we have the name we have the dark turn it over no nesting it's looking good I'm really really pleased with that one what I'm going to do is peel away some of this backing and then just cut round you can do it you can get fusible backing you can get wash away backing it's up to you but I've chosen this I know it works for me um, what I've done here to get rid of any loose ends you just need to cut off any of these loose bits of thread and sometimes you've got a bit coming down just take take them away with your stitch and picker so there we are we have a project it's turned out quite nice I'm rather pleased with that so thank you for watching I hope it's been of some help please get in touch with me with any of your designs any of the things you're doing you've been a great help to me out there the bobbin thread changing the you know just moving the e down a little bit all of those tips have really helped so thank you so much all right well thank you for watching all our videos Deriton 33